Hello, fellow humans. It is I, Trinity, here with another fun, diverse fairy tale. This one is coming out of Africa, and it is going to explain how dogs and people became such close friends. So let's just hop right on into it. No explanations needed. Why the dog is a friend of man. Long, long ago, the jackal and the dog were brothers and lived together in the wild bush. Each day, they would go hunting together, and when evening fell, they would return to the valley, which was their only home, and share their food. One night, they both came back empty-handed and ravenously hungry, and to make matters much worse, a cold wind was blowing across the bush, and the animals could not find any protection from the gale. Alas, said the dog, it is a very bad thing to feel hungry, but much worse to feel both hungry and cold at the same time. Lie down and go to sleep, suggested the jackal. Then, when the morning comes, we can go hunting again, and perhaps catch that young deer we so nearly caught today. But the dog could not sleep. His stomach rumbled, and his teeth chattered, for his hairy coat was less warm than the jackal's. As he lay on the ground, his eyes wide open in misery, he caught sight of a red glow in the distance. Jackal! What is that light over there? That's a village, and the red is a man's fire, explained the jackal. Oh, fire is warm, said the dog loggingly. Won't you go and fetch me some fire, Jackal? You are much braver than I. Certainly not. You fetch it yourself if you want it. It was your idea. But the dog was afraid of man, and he curled up even smaller on the bare ground to try to keep himself warm. As he lay there, he thought that perhaps the people in the village were eating, and he wondered whether they might leave some bones lying on the ground after their meal, which he could creep in and steal. The thought made him hungry and hungrier, so that presently he forgot his fear and said boldly to the Jackal, I can stay here in the cold no longer. I am going to the village and will try to get some fire. Perhaps I may even bring back some bones for you too. If I don't get back soon, call me, in case I cannot find my way to you. So off ran the dog towards the red glow in the village, and when he was nearly there, he slowed down and crept in on his stomach, hoping that no one would hear him. Nearer and nearer he got to the fire, sniffing eagerly as he smelled the odor of a past meal still lingering upon the air. Just as he reached the dumbers of the fire outside the door of a hut, some fowls roosting in a nearby tree gave the alarm. A man rushed out and caught him, lifting high his spear and saying, "'What are you doing in my compound, you thieving dog?' "'Oh, please don't kill me. I have not come to harm anybody here, but only to get a little warmth from your dying fire. I beg of you, let me lie down here to rest and to warm myself, and later I will go back to the bush and never trouble you again.' The dog looked so cold and miserable that the man— who was kind at heart, felt sorry for him. He put down his spear and said, Very well. If you promise not to harm anyone in this village, you may lie down by the fire. But when you are warm, you must return to the bush. The dog thanked him profusely and lay down beside the fire, on which the man piled some more sticks and blew them into a roaring blaze. Now the dog was happy indeed, for under his very nose lay a bone which someone had thrown down at the end of their meal. He gnawed happily away for some time while the heat of the fire warmed his shivering limbs. Never had he been so content or so comfortable. Suddenly, the man called from inside his house. Aren't you warm yet? Not quite, answered the dog, who had just seen another bone nearby that he wanted to chew. Well, I'll give you a little longer, said the man, and all was quiet again except for the cracking of bones under the dog's strong teeth. Aren't you warm yet? asked the man presently. But the dog thought unhappily of the cold wind blowing across the bush, and creeping even closer to the fire, he begged, let me just stay a little bit longer. It was some time before the man called out again, for both he and the dog at his door had fallen fast asleep. You must have finished warming yourself by now, said the man, rising to his feet and coming out of his home. The dog, deciding that honesty was the best policy, looked into the man's eyes and said, Yes, I am warm now, but I do not want to go back to the bush, where I am so often cold and hungry. Will you not let me stay in the village with you? I will help you hunt the birds that fly in the forest. I will teach you the cunning ways of the wild animals so that you can kill them for food. And I promise, promise you, that unlike my brother the jackal, I will never rob you of your goats or chickens. All I ask in return is a place by your fire and the remains of your meal. The man now looked closely into the dog's eyes and saw that he was speaking the truth. Very well. If you promise to serve and obey, I will give you warmth and food. Ever since that day, the dog has lived with man. But when at night you hear the jackal calling, Bawa! Bawa! from the bush, you will know that he is calling for his brother the dog to return to him with the fire and the bones that he went to fetch. But the dog never answers the call, and the jackal wanders the bush alone. The end! In preparing for this reading, I did 
like a half cup's worth of research on jackals, if I'm being honest, um, just enough to figure out what they look like and to try to figure out what they sound like. But uh, frankly, my Alexa device was not especially helpful on that front. It just kept braying at me like a donkey and telling me this is what a donkey sounds like, which is not helpful at all. In any case, so jackals have been around for a really long time. In fact, the ancient Egyptians uh, thought that they were gods of the underworld, and so their evening yips and yowl sounds um, were like a haunting story from the dead. Um, And also according to PBS, modern culture has demonized them much in the same way that hyenas have been demonized, uh, where they get the reputation for like skulking and being sneaky and stealing, even though lions are way more dirtbaggy than hyenas or jackals. Just want to throw that out there. The poor reputation of the jackal has uh, gone so far as to become synonymous with a like a follower who is following someone negative, doing bad things. So like, not only are you a dirt bag, but you're not even the head dirt bag. That's what you're getting called when you get called a jackal. So bummer on that front. And let's see. Yeah, I really don't have a whole lot for this story. I just thought it was cute because it had doggos in it. Um, and the question that I have is... What do we think about the jackal? Should the dog have gone back and gotten him? Um, my first thought was, well, you have to put on your mask before others. So the dog has to save himself before he can save the jackal. But then he doesn't go back to the jackal. And it's not even that he can't find him because the jackal cries every single night. Maybe the jackal would like to come and be by the fire and be domesticated. Who can say? Um, I am possibly overthinking that one, uh, as I tend to do. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Was the dog a dirt bag? Should he have gone back for the jackal? And uh, of course, as always, please hit that like button. It helps more than you could possibly know. Subscribe, tell a friend, and uh, maybe check me out on Instagram. I'm Trinity Tries there too, and I do more like art stuff and memes. So that's all I've got for you today. Bye bye, fairy tale dorks, and I'll catch you in the next one.